lion for those who escape from Moab and for the survivors in the land. So God's work and judgment will be complete and basically no one can escape this. Hello everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome back to our channel. Welcome to all the new family members. Today we are back in Isaiah. Once again, we are on Isaiah 15. I believe we did Isaiah 14 last week and My dog's so loud when he walks. Um, I believe we did Isaiah 14 last week was a lot about like the enemy, Satan, not giving him more power than he actually has and things like that. And if you're new, hello, I'm so happy to meet you. My name is Peyton. I'm so glad you're here. Pop open your Bible to Isaiah 15 and we can read along together. But if you'd like to join the family, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you never miss an upload. Alrighty, I'm just going to start out by reading Isaiah 15, and it says, A pronouncement concerning Moab. Ar in Moab is devastated, destroyed in a night. Ker in Moab is devastated, destroyed in a night. Debon went up to its temple to weep at its high places. Moab wails on Nebo and in Mededeba. Every head is shaved, every beard is chopped short. In its streets they wear sackcloth. On its rooftops and in its public squares, everyone wails, falling down and weeping. Heshbon and Elila cry out. Their voices are heard as far away as Zahaz. Therefore, the soldiers of Moab cry out and they tremble. My heart cries out over Moab, whose fugitives flee as far as Zor. To Egloth, Shilishia, they go up the ascent of Luth. Man, these names are hard. They go up the ascent of Luhith, weeping. They raise a cry of destruction on the road of Horonam. The waters of Nimrim are desolate. The grass is withered. The foliage is gone and the vegetation has vanished. So they carry their wealth and belongings over the wadi of the willows for their cry echoes throughout the territory of Moab. Their wailing reaches Iglaim. Their wailing reaches Berylim. The waters of Debon are full of blood and I will bring on Debon even more than this. A line of those who escaped from Moab and for the survivors in the land. All right. Well, okay. So when I first read this, I was kind of confused. I didn't really know what was going on. So basically, there's an announcement of the invasion on Moab. And basically, it's more judgment from God on these um, sinful cities and countries. And so basically, these Moabites have been running and turning to their pagan gods so gods other than our lord and savior and so basically here there's just going to be great dist distress there's going to be destruction and in verse 5 when it says my heart cries out over moab whose fugitives flee as far as zor so zor is the town where lot's daughters escaped from and then basically this this place was just thriving before it had green land, vast vegetation, it had this water running through it, and so now it's dying. It's being kind of like destroyed. And so in verse 7 when it says, they carry their wealth and belongings over the wadi of the willow. So these refugees are fleeing with their things. And in verse 8 it says, for their cry echoes throughout the territory of Moab. So this goes far beyond Moab. Basically everyone's seeing God's judgment. They're seeing all this judgment take place. And then at the very end, in verse 9, when it says, A lion for those who escape from Moab and for the survivors in the land. So God's work and judgment will be complete, and basically no one can escape this. So I kind of just see a lot of these um, chapters in Isaiah as like a renewal of these different places. And... I want you to know that like God's people are being saved. The ones that do believe in God and do serve him are being saved. It's not that they don't get to see these hardships and kind of go through their own hardships, but they are not the ones being destroyed. They are still going to be saved. Um, and so I just think this is interesting. And I know Isaiah, like if you guys have been here through, since Isaiah 1, I think some of it is very encouraging and then we see other parts like this that are kind of like, well, why is God just destroying everything? But like I've said in past Bible studies, God is a fair and just God. So everything he's doing is because these people deserve it and it's for the greater good of like his plan and like his kingdom. And these are also like places and countries who have been really against God for quite some time, worshiping pagan gods, just doing everything opposite 
from our Lord. And so I think it's really just God showing up here and being like, I've shown you guys, I've shown you guys myself many times that you still choose to worship your other gods. You still choose to do these things. You still choose to like hurt other countries and do all these sinful activities. And so this is kind of just that judgment and that cleansing. But that is all in chapter 15. If you guys want to go deeper into that and you guys find so ooh, if you guys want to go deeper into that and you guys find some things that I didn't, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and what you have to say. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I love our Bible studies, but I think I haven't ended this, these in a prayer in a while, so I'm just going to end us in prayer and then send you guys off into your week. So, dear God, thank you so much for these beautiful people, each and every one of them watching this video. Um, that was an interesting chapter in Isaiah, and I pray that you just give us the knowledge to understand that. I pray for a great week. I pray that we know that even though we're following you, we can still face hardships and that the difference is that we have you to help us through that. So I pray that you just help us through all of our hardships and tribulations this week, that we would look to you, that we would never turn away from you, but that our eyes are always focused on you. And yeah, we thank you so much. We surrender everything we're trying to hold on to. We give you that um, that surrender today and we love you and we trust you with this. And I pray all this in Jesus name. Amen. Yay. All right. I hope you guys have the best week ever. And I will see all of your beautiful faces on Friday.